Okay, so I chose Thomas Mapumo for these videos for today because he um, sings songs that are steeped in our cultural religion. And and they're really masculine though. I don't I don't like that they are so masculine. But anyway, he plays songs, Thomas Mapumo, straight from our culture. And he uses an old, old Shana that's really hard for a bitch to understand. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Oh my god, I keep losing shells and the shell fell off. I'm not surprised. Now I don't like Taylor Swift. Whenever I looked at her energy and at her light, I didn't like it. I saw her as a bigot and a racist, and I was convinced that she was of the dark side. So I, I never wanted to do her, but today it's like a girl's marathon out here in these bundus, and it's my gift to your asses for ancestors day in case you're bored on ancestors day you can watch this marathon so if you're going to be bored on ancestors day don't watch it don't watch it don't watch this marathon now watch it you know on ancestors day anyway i i decided to just do a general reading of taylor swift because i i know that when i do readings of of a soul i get to know that soul and sometimes we bond like i just bonded with liza over there i went crazy <laughs> So I'm going to do Taylor Swift. Just a general reading of Taylor Swift. Okay? Taylor. 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 And Taylor walks into the plate wearing a crown of stars. Literally literally a crown of stars are above her head they are not really sparkling as bright as they should be but they're not are dull either right so she was anointed to be a star and i'm being told that in her former life she was famous and her former life after that in her former life after that in her former life before this one she was an actress. She was a very, very famous actress. Taylor Swift is a reincarnation of a very famous actress who died um, in the 1920s, right? So she has always come into this world with uh, star power. And no matter what she looks like, because she's gone through a lot of plastic surgery and a lot of body changes. So no matter what she looks like in that regard, um, she was born to be a star. She was very heavy set in her former life. In her former life, she, she, not when she got older, because I'm seeing, you know, like the petite kind of female with the big boob boobies and, and all that stuff of the 1920s. And she was blonde then and she smoked a lot. Highly likely she smokes now because she really smoked a lot and it appears that over over here um, she might be a smoker Taylor Swift might actually be a smoker a, a great smoker okay in this plate besides the past life that I just saw in this plate is a very bitter young lady oh my god I'm really getting the bitter ones <laughs> I think it's because I'm bitter deep down. And it's funny that I'm bitter because I, I finished A Light in the Cave. I think it's the memories. I think it's what I was writing about that's made me bitter. So anyway, um, Taylor is, is very bitter. She's very, very unhappy with her life, not her fame. She rides fame very well. She sits on it very well. She doesn't hate it at all. She is hateful of her her life her actual life away from the limelight she feels ugly away from the limelight she really feels ugly and she's saying i'm ugly that's why i have so much man trouble i'm ugly that's why i have so much man trouble and that's why i've never truly been loved you know she she wants love she wants 
she wants love and she she's very intelligent by the way very intelligent always has come into this world with a big brain she's always been caucasian every time she comes she says by choice she chooses to be caucasian because she, she she doesn't want to know what it is like to be like the others once again the kind of bigotry at least i was indian i know i was a beautiful indian because <laughs> india to me they are beautiful yeah so anyway um um she um is not happy and she is smoking she's not happy unlike the other stars that i have come across of uh, you know her caliber like britney spears not exactly her caliber but you know what i'm saying she doesn't have a childish soul she is her age she's very politically minded she's very much into the lgbtq community she sees them as the real downtrodden people in other words, she doesn't see black people as downtrodden. Okay? She sees the LGBT community LGBTQ community as the only downtrodden people in the world. She, actually, she is literally saying in this play that black women are pampered by society. That if we were not pampered by society, we would do better. Those are her words. Not mine. Her words, if we were not pampered by society, we would do better. But, you know, we're so pampered because we're always holding our blackness against the world. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't wrong about Taylor Swift. I knew her soul was this way. Okay, she is a low-level soul. Very low-level soul. So, anyway, Taylor has always been a southern girl like when she was made when her energy was formed and was brought into this world she was a southern girl and i don't know why she keeps taking me to her past but she feels those were her glory days her past lives were her glory days she was a southern belle she she lived on a plantation she had slaves all around her and she says she says in my past Black males were only for sex in her past life. Now, I feel like I should put a disclaimer, okay? Metaphysical science has no hard physical scientific proof that it exists. Therefore, whatever is coming out of my mouth, is nothing but mere speculation and is only for entertainment purposes only it holds absolutely no truth in this world of ours except to the soul i am talking to okay thank you i mean this wish doctor right here knows that in less than a hundred years, there will be lots of physical, scientific proof of the existence of metaphysical science. In fact, we are seeing it every day. We are making the mainstream every day. And I know a light in the candle is going to make it in the mainstream. <laughs> anyway, let me get off myself. Okay, selfish little bitch that I am today. Okay, so... um. We know this, but today there is absolutely no proof, okay? And this might get real groovy and you may just want to stop watching, especially if you are a Taylor Swift fan, okay? okay. So Taylor Swift has taken me back to the South, Louisiana. Really go. Yes, she says Louisiana. To the south of the old, 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 old days, right? Where obviously she lived in the back of beyond plantation. Not even the good ones. <laughs> That's just me saying that. So be nasty. But she was the daughter of a plantation owner. And 
she said, like she said, and I'm not going to repeat it. She said what she said. Okay. So now we're moving on and she's showing me how wonderful life was. And she is showing me. I ain't joking, people. Hold on to your seats. She is showing me that the days of segregation were so much better. Everybody knew their place and nobody was whining. So, okay, I'm saying, to, I'm asking her, okay, when you say nobody was whining, what do you mean? Taylor Swift says. Well, all these campaigns by black people, there are so many of them. Always whining about equality when America is for everyone. And you make yourself who you are. So I'm asking her, while she's still in the plate, you therefore don't believe that inequality exists? She is saying, of course it exists for the LGBTQ community. Not for the Black people, actually she said not for the blacks, so I'll say it exactly. Not for the blacks and not for the Mexicans. Okay, I get so sick and tired of these causes being thrown in my face. And then we get to her moment of bitterness. Kanye, for instance, I didn't bring that up. I'm just channeling and saying exactly what she said. Kanye got away with abusing me because he was black. In the music industry, these black people get away with so much that we white musicians cannot get away with. That's unfair. Should I then be standing somewhere rioting and marching because they have more rights than I do in the music industry? So I'm saying to her, I'm very sorry, this is going to be a very serious conversation while she's in this plate and I'm going to keep her in this plate. So I'm saying to her, your earnings, Taylor Swift, Sure that you earn more than Beyonce by almost a hundred thousand or more. Every time. Every time. Doesn't that show that you are not being discriminated against? She says, money is nothing. It's the way I'm treated. Okay, how are you treated? If Beyonce and I were to walk into a room at the same time, no one would notice me. Everybody would notice Beyonce because she's black. Okay. I refuse to believe that, but if, if Taylor believes it, I will respect what is her truth, right? This is her truth. This has probably happened to her, okay? This, she said, yes, thank you. So this is what, this, is prob this has probably happened to her, and she has probably been maligned, you know? I will not dismiss what she is saying, because this is her human experience and a soul never lies. When a soul is bitter or in pain, it is something they have gone through in the human experience that makes them that way. Then she just said, I don't know if this is random, but she just said, black men don't ask me out anyway. Okay. She just said that. I'm letting it breathe, okay? I don't know what it is about, but anyway. Anyway, I'm taking out Ms. Taylor, who might prove to be my best reading today. <laughs> and she falls off the board. She is going through some things, and that would make sense. Because 
her truth in the plate shows that she has reached some kind of crossroad, right? But anyway, Miss Taylor Falls, there is, she is currently going through some form of distraction financial it could be just she's not making enough money it could be that she's not getting what she needs what's the matter what's the matter taylor and she starts crying she says nothing is going her way at the moment she says i'm out of fashion and I'm saying you're not out of fashion. You may feel like you're out of fashion, but you're not out of fashion. You're one of the best female artists there is. It's true. She says, thank you. So I'm going to give Miss Taylor Swift a chance to just like calm down. And because of her emotions, I'm going to, to wrap this because... It is what it is. She, I don't know if I can explain this right in the physical world. Okay. She seems to be going through experiences from all her lifetimes. They seem to have just come together. If that makes sense. And she is trying to keep her head above it all. In her last lifetime, where she'd see, that's why uh, I always have to pull myself back when I'm try when I want to be angry and mean because when I pull myself back, I actually get some truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I pull myself back, she is telling me that when she was in Louisiana, Baton Rouge. And when she was the daughter of a plantation owner, she was in love with a black male. See, that's why I said, where did that come from? See, yeah, she's explaining where it came from because I said it out loud. Usually when you say it out loud, they have to finish the story. <laughs> I'm just letting you know you met a physical scientist out there. Say it out loud, they'll finish the story, right? Because she's finishing the story. She was in love with a black male and he was sold because they were in a sexual relationship and they got caught. So she vowed never to feel this kind of pain again and she vowed to stick to her own race, right? Right? Okay, go. So, what's the story? She said she succeeded in all these lifetimes until now. So, Taylor could be having the hearts for a black male. Okay? That's, that's what we're getting here. She could be having the hearts for a black male and she doesn't want to. She's fighting against herself and she doesn't want to because her soul is carrying the memories from the other lifetime. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't want to. Taylor doesn't think she's beautiful, but interestingly enough, let me go back to that. She is considered very beautiful. People tell her she's beautiful all the time. She doesn't think so. She's in a relationship with someone who really adores her, but it's coming to an end. The relationship is coming to an end. He really adores her, but it's coming to an end. She really thinks that the only reason she is with him is because he has money. And if it wasn't for his money, she wouldn't be with him. And here is the secret relationship right here. So this may be a, an actual secret relationship with some black dude, okay? This may be an actual, because it's right here. This is Taylor. This is the black guy. He, not so much in love with her, not in love with her at all. She, afraid of getting caught. Now, when I was reading this girl, I didn't expect this. She's afraid of getting caught, and he's not in love with her. And her, this shell here that is her is saying that kind of 
breaks her heart her soul because it kind of looks like history is repeating itself okay he ain't a nobody he comes from a wealthy family of course that makes sense that's how they would meet he ain't a nobody he comes from a wealthy family whoever he is who is knocking boots with taylor okay but her relationship with whoever she's with like i said is coming to an end whoever she is officially with and also so is her relationship her sexual her it's a to us it's a relationship because they sex and there is emotional attachment they are very attached to each other they may be in denial, but they are very attached to each other. It's also coming to an end. Taylor says she can't bear to be alone. But maybe it's best this time around. So, okay. So, since your relationships are coming to an end, Taylor, what's next? Taylor, show us your next man. Taylor, show us your next man. Once again, I have to be compassionate because she's really brittle. She's really, really brittle, you know. She's going through it. So tell us your, your next, your, the next man in your life. Tell us the next man in your life. What is he like? Okay, let's see if we can get something out of this soul because I'm about to stop. Okay, the, her next relationship, people... Which might be a rebound. So she might break up with someone and then secretly, you know, we won't know about it. And then they'll get back together again because they've been together before. It could be the very same relationship she's in. They could break up. But he's very handsome. Whoever he is, he is damn good looking. And he doesn't have as much as she does. This is him. This is her. Right? He's very handsome. Anyway. This is a relationship she's had before or so what, probably they'll break up for a week and or maybe a month or three months and realize that they miss each other and they're really compatible and then they'll get back together. This relationship of Taylor's is the one that will lead to her fans seeing a wedding because this relationship, the one she's going into is the one for years. Okay. He might get me. Okay, let me ask it. Will you marry him, Taylor? Will you marry him? Will you marry him? Once again, she says her music is not going well. She's not being treated right because she's white. Yes. Taylor Swift. I'm not good with time. Oh, forgive a bitch. She's not good with time. But Taylor Swift is about to get married. Maybe two days, two weeks, two months, two years. But she's getting married. Okay? There's a number two thing. Okay, I'm still not good with five. Okay. Um, will you have kids? Will you have kids? Do you have kids? I have to ask because I didn't see any souls, any new souls on her board at all. Well, there's a no here. She is not maternal at all. She is not driven by the need to procreate at all. She's more like, see, here he is again. He's really good looking. Poorer than she is, but he is damn handsome. But here they are again, really loving each other. This is true love. This is the real deal. This is love, the real deal. And um, they are loving each other. This this is great. This is cool. But no, no kids. Maybe she'll change her mind in the future. But Taylor is not maternal and oddly enough i didn't see any babies but you know maybe it's because she says she doesn't want any maybe her soul will change its mind and so are you saying i didn't have children in all my other lifetimes why should i do it now okay all righty so what other questions do you want to ask 
So Taylor, what are the problems you're having in the music industry? What are the problems you're having in the music industry? And once again, I can't even finish asking her the question because once again, she's back on this black woman resentment thing. You know, it's a, it's a black woman resentment trait. It could be she's resentful because, you know, she feels she doesn't have the right to be with this black man that she loves. But really, it's a matter of choice, right? The right to choose. She probably maybe comes from a background that won't allow her to do those things as well. So, you know, let's feel for this girl. This girl seems to be in a box. She seems to be living in a box, you know, with lots of thou shalt and thou shalt not. Anyway, let me get back to what she's saying about black women. She says, for a white female musician, she has aged out already. But a black female musician never ages out. This is her truth. And she is saying it. So she said, they cut black women some slack when they are older. They stop cutting us slack when we get older. So we may start the race in the front of the pack. We end the race at the back. Her words. Her truth. We can only learn. Okay. So. Do I have any more questions for Taylor Swift? I don't think I do. Okay. I also just don't want to put her through this. To me, Taylor is a low level soul because she sees differences in people more than similarity. Does that make sense? When you see differences in people more than you see similarities, you're a low-level soul. You know? I, hopefully, am working on being a high-level soul because I'm a sinner. Okay, I'm a sinner. But, you know, I, she, she's too ingrained in them and us. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's a low level soul. However, she's also a very sensitive creature, but she puts on a very brave front. She, she puts on a very brave face. Like, you know, when Kanye and Kim were eviscerating her, she put on a brave face. Okay, here's my question. Who lied? You or Kanye? Who lied in all that in that whole argument? You or Kanye? Okay, let's start with you. One, two, three. Taylor says she did not lie. She did not lie. What she said Kanye did to her with, with the record and the whatever is exactly what happened. Okay. So that was her, right? Sama said, did Kanye lie? Did Kanye lie, Taylor? Did Kanye lie? Well, I like this song. She's very specific. No. She says he didn't lie either. No. He didn't lie. So, what she's basically telling us, so this is the story. The story is, everything I said and everything he said was true. It, it depended on how it was couched, how it was said. That's what she said. She says, Kanye doesn't like me. I liked him. I even wanted to work with him. But he doesn't like me. Once again, the race thing. She said, most black men don't like me. Why do you say that, Taylor? Maybe all men don't like you. J 
just saying. <laughs> Why do you say that? She says, because I like them more than they like me. They barely even look at me. They are about the Kim Kardashians who almost look black. They barely look at me. Okay. Okay. So this is the story. The story is that Taylor Swift really does like her main chocolate. But the one, she doesn't have the guts to stand up for what she likes. She doesn't have the guts to stand up for what she likes. So she then blames it on them. And also she resents black women because she believes in her small mind that we are made for black men. That's her story. And I'm surprised as hell. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I expected. That isn't what I expected. This whole reading has shocked a bitch. This whole reading has shocked me. But then, I'm really looking in my African culture to see, you know, it's like what they say. There is, like what they say, like, a man who exhibits too much hate towards a certain tribe is probably in love with the women of that tribe, right? And it's possible. But anyway, I am done. I got to do some cooking. I want to start working on the tamales for Ancestors Day. You know, that's another reason why I like Mexican food. I can, pre I can do the prep and then I do the cooking or I can, you know, whatever. So I got to do some cooking and have a nice week. Have a nice week, people. Have a great Ancestors Day. And please be kind to each other. Be kind. It doesn't hurt to be kind. And I've noticed that people are so lonely. People are, I'm lonely. So there. Why talk about other people? I'm lonely. People are so lonely. I'm lonely. I do, I do nothing but work all the time. I finished a whole book in two weeks. I do nothing but work, work, work. And I'm lonely and I'm cut off. That's why I really want to do these tours because I'm totally cut off. And I've noticed that a lot of us do suffer that. We do go through it. I'm so damn lonely. We do go through that. It's the curse of living in the first world. It's also a gift because, you know, I wouldn't live near my relatives. The point is, let's try to reach out to each other. Right? Just good morning. Just say good morning. Just say good morning. You know what I'm saying? Let's just try to reach out to each other. And let's just try to stretch ourselves. And let's be kind to each other but most importantly let's be kind to ourselves and this lecture just came straight out of a sinner <laughs> so you are free to do with it whatever you want i want to welcome all the new subscribers you have arrived this is bantu territory and you are Bantu too because the Bantu are in the world and you are the world, okay? And DNA tests are proving all the time that I ain't lying, okay? I ain't lying. You have arrived. We have been waiting for you. We have had your names on placards and we've been calling for you and calling for you and calling for you and we will never stop. We are never going to stop until there are millions of us. Having said that, I got the greatest joy when one of my viewers, she, she wrote to me and she said she can now read shells. She has been practicing and she can hear her ancestors talking her through the shells. Oh my God. I said, I'm a proud mama right now. I'm a proud mama because I'm really here to teach. I'm really here to spread Bantu culture because if we continue to keep it a secret it's gonna die it has become so secretive that we ourselves don't know much about it we the bantus don't know much about it because it is too too secretive for instance 
I was the only one who was told by other witch doctors, Ancestors Day is October 31. That's when that's when the ancestors come down from heaven and they sit with you so you can talk to them directly. But, you know, don't let the people know because it gives them too much power. That sort of shit, I ain't for it. But I know, you're going to know. Because, you know, a culture will die in speculation if it is not talked about, if it is not shared, and if it is not tweaked. My grandfather, who was a chief, said culture serves the people. The people don't serve culture. So if it needs to be changed to suit the times, then change it. So you're all new blood. You are all new blood to the Bantu. Everybody on my channel right here. You're all new blood. And the Bantu do not like change. They hate change. They fight change like nobody's business. But you don't have a problem with change because you are here. You are here. Watching this old biddy do her old things. You are here. And you can change the Bantu. You can modernize us. I insist you do that. So I was pleased that her ancestors are teaching her how to how to read shells because that's the whole point of my being here you know spreading the culture that's my point opening the door for those who had the door shut on them for no reason at all for no reason at all and i'm opening the door for other bantus too so yeah, I, I was really proud. I was really happy. I was really happy that she worked so hard to be in tune with her ancestors to the point that they could now talk her through shells and teach her shells. And she actually gave a reading that was very, very accurate. So anyway, you're here now. We're waiting for you and we're still waiting for lots of you. Happy Ancestors Day! Bye.